Hello everyone, Master Zeon 101 here, and I figured in today's video I would start off doing a bit of a topological demo. So we'll start off looking at this in front view, and I'll just take the cube and delete it, and we'll just shift A, insert a plane, and we'll divide this plane in half and just del delete the other side. And I'm going to select this point and just control click mark in order to bevel this one point. And I'm just pressing two a couple of times to get it to profile 0.5. And we're just rolling it in with about, let's uh, give it 12 segments. And from here, we can actually take this and spin it under modifiers using screw. And because it's blue, it means we're good to go. So I'll just go ahead and sharpen this. Keep in mind that with these screw shapes, you still have a seam down the middle. And people always ask why I opt to use these screw shapes instead of just cylinders. And it's always because of the non-destructive control that I have with modifiers, but really I just like starting with these things is just a test and I just became used to it. So we will just go ahead and delete this interior edge, which has now changed the rules of the game. You can see it in wire mode, but you can't see it in solid. And what I mean by that is that the normals got flipped. So if we press Alt V and we press face orientation, we can see that the uh, normals have gotten flipped and you can't just go in and just press shift in because this isn't a real mesh it's a modifier generated mesh so instead we have to press control tilde and choose calc order or we could hit flip which will just flip it but in this case we want to use calc order so now that our mesh is blue again we can press alt v and turn off face orientation and we're good to go if you didn't have that uh, dealt with then you would have been dealing with um, boolean issues down the line so we're going to insert a cylinder, but instead of a 32 round cylinder, I'm going to actually lower the amount of pain and take it down to 24. And we're just going to rotate the cylinder and place it where we need, scale it out on the X axis to create a, a very particular double angle conundrum. In fact, this is a kind of a triple angle trouble situation that we're going to be solving today, but hopefully we should be able to get in and out. Uh, pretty promptly and learn some uh, tips in the process. So we'll select both of these, press Q, and under Boolean, select Union. And now that they're union together, I'm just going to press 1 at the top to go back to my general layer. And we can just select this and press Control A, Visual Geometry to Mesh, no holds barred. We're going to solve this. So in order to, you know, for the memories, we'll just save that shape. And we're just going to get in here and just begin solving things. So the main thing with this sort of topological situation is the idea of uh, maintaining curvature, topological control, and containment. And by being able to do that, um, you should be able to have a pretty um, well-controlled, well-shaded approach or result. But otherwise, you end up with something that's a little more random. Also, for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, we'll be doing this tutorial in motion. So what that means is I will deselect everything press Q and we will just shift click add camera to set up a bounce camera and instead of positioning the camera we're going to go in and actually position it by press control on numpad 0 but before that I actually want to press shift G and select the parent of this which is this empty I guess it's easier just select the empty in the outliner and we can actually position it around the troublesome area like so and we'll also press shift s snap our cursor here shift a and put a second empty around it which will be kind of our parent for this rotating empty you'll see why as we move on and so now when we rotate this empty we're able to move the camera but the empty is also perpetually rotating the camera so let's go ahead and position our camera exactly where we want to look and work today and set our frames to 9000 and let's begin working also for this i want to duplicate my setup in order to create a second setup just in case we have some view related issues we can just stop mucking around and get to work but i don't think we'll need this immediately so let's just go in full screen mode And it's definitely rotating just a little slow, actually. So let's make it a little funner. We'll make it 3,000. 
And let's solve this topology in motion. I know, weird challenge. So with this area, we want to just merge these here. Do the same with this one, select these two. It can be a little tough. Merge them, select these two. Well, that one, that one, that one, that one, merge. Select this one, this one, this one, merge. Select this one, merge. We can just slide this one over and we see that we're outside of our view a little bit. So that's where we may want to pause and actually grab the main empty and just position it down. Maybe even scale it out to just give us a little bit of room here so we can breathe and we can uh, continue on with our adventure. I was actually going to stop and slow down the timeline uh, by adding more frames because it's being driven by the frame range. But I see that I'm actually capable of accomplishing this challenge even though actually this is kind of crazy let's change it up to 9,000 which is the actual goal and let's continue on with this so the goal here is to M merge at last press K we'll select this and just jump across just really hacking our own flow uh, pretty similar to the last video where if the topology isn't going the way that you need it to you need to make some choices as as far as this area goes we may want to jump our timeline back to the beginning so we can reanalyze it and this area almost doesn't need to exist same with this one you know this is where you have to make some very hard choices when it comes to maintaining curvature and determining which edges are going to actually be problematic down the road but when it comes to solving this stuff i mean me personally i've actually been solving this stuff so long that it's become like second nature so i don't even think about the amount of decisions that have to be made with this um i always find it a enriching learning experience but you know that's just me so continuing on we can decide with this area that do we want to do anything to change the form or do we just want to maintain this connection do we want to just make this quads and just keep going with a uh, triangle there to terminate and we'll find out that answer as we continue on with this the goal is to get it to be able to take uh, either subdivision or boolean which is um, the goal of a topological study but now that the camera is actually turning around over here we can begin kind of reanalyzing some of these areas like this area could be simplified we, we definitely don't want our tries happening inside of this area but if we skew this it creates longer geometry that's going to begin causing some shading issues so that's why i was saying that that area can be a bit of a conundrum while we're looking at this we might as well turn that into a quad and just continue letting the camera just take us around on a journey in fact i will tab out of edit mode grab this empty and just move it over like so And this is the part where you really want to have the empty. I mean, I'm not saying you should try to do this stuff um, in motion, but I am today. It's just that kind of day. So we're just moving the empty, not against the rules, written by me. And we'll just move that over and we can start making some decisions here to begin consolidating this area. In fact, this one is actually a bit more of a conundrum. We actually want to offset all of the tension that's about to begin happening here from the level of rewrite that's about to begin happening in order to make this work. So just dissolving that really cleans that up. We'll slide this over, which will allow us to make that connection. We can do the same thing here, just join that, do a little bit of slide action. I feel like there's a double situation happening in here so you really have to be cautious with these particular shapes but i can't have the video uh, not showing me where i'm looking or where i need to look on the mesh so the empty will be needing some uh, rotational adjustments for that and also you got to be uh, cautious with your sliding in some cases sliding can really compromise areas of the form that are being held um, secure by other areas in fact we can see that I got enough of a flow here to have a 
outside Tetris that allows me to just bring in a new connection, you know, bring in the boys and start really just working on things. But we see that I'm far enough in this area and the camera is going to begin taking me back. So that doesn't mean that we can't complete a little bit of work on the way out of here. And the next time we see it, it'll just be in better shape. So no double, no double, no double. And we'll just slide this stuff over, just move around a bit and just see what we can um, improve on the way back. I mean, it's almost a um, interesting idea. And it all started from someone saying, you know, um, there's, in fact, I'm gonna press Alt V and we're just gonna turn off shadows because shadows are really uh, messing with me in this particular challenge uh, as far as understanding things. Uh, I think shadows are trying to convey to me orientation, but instead they're reading to me as form issues. This area almost looks like it has a double due to, I don't know, we'll just say AA or something, but we can just slide, just a little sliding, never hurt anybody. This area is actually so undefined that it makes me just wanna do a connection just to uh, give a little bit more definition to this. I mean, there's also the um, side of me that always wants to just give an extra piece of geometry in there to just give some extra definition where I could begin offsetting things like you see me doing as I'm coming back around here, just selecting things and just messing around. And we'll just keep sliding as we're just letting the camera just take us on this journey across town while we look at things. This area isn't actually the most optimal solution. So we could actually optimize it even more by just merging these two maybe in the center of each other which creates this situation. And you'd think that I would want to convert that into a quad, but I would probably actually rather put a lightning bolt in between and then turn those into quads and move it back around. Maybe even put a edge in between to ease some of the tensions with this part. And with this area, you know, we're just looking at it, maybe doing a little slide action. We don't have a lot of slide action we can do unless we put an edge here for now. But it does enlighten us to the fact that we can remove that one, but we need to be able to hand off its responsibility to someone more worthy. So that's probably where this one comes in mind. However, for this one, we want to put a lightning bolt in between and start making sanity of this area. And it actually is starting to make a little more sense as we uh, kind of clean it up. However, the flow in this area is getting a little bit uncontrollable. But once we put a couple of quads in, uh, a couple of triangle terminators just at the end that should actually clean this area up enough so the next thing is what do we want to do with this we might as well quad it but if we quad it that does validate this area's existence so at this point i do want to grab the empty and rotate a bit more so we can get some uh, juicier angles whenever we're playing so i'm just in here still modeling and for all these areas that are about to be handed off to basically the geometry that I'm drawing, I just like to have things in place in order to uh, prevent them from disrupting the surface around. So while this looks like I'm just playing a game with geometry, um, a lot of these decisions I'm making are you know, pretty much the same decisions over and over. Uh, in inner edge terminations are essential for this because we want this to be able to flow, but we also want to um, have the form be held. So that's why there's so much kind of crisscrossing and merging and switching around happening is because, you know, we can actually hold the shape and really just stitch together exactly what we want. These are just way too close to not be able to make the connection. So we come back through and we rem have a remedial look at what our choices got us. And this area, I will just never like so we could just terminate it, simplify it, and that, that could work to an extent, but I can guarantee you that this is gonna be problematic later and come back to haunt us because we uh, you know, are solving topology on a moving mesh, not making excuses. I mean, that one doesn't even need to exist, so that actually makes this area have a lot more logical flow going to it. I mean, you gotta watch it when you're sliding legacy pieces around because those pieces are things that have already um, you know established 
an important part of the form so you don't want to slide those around too much but as we're moving around you can see that things get a little bit unruly and you know I'm bored so let's grab this and let's grab this and correct it here and was there a double there nope so let's just um, last 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 so now we have a quad flow at least being started up here and we could start just merging these things while we slide that one back around and then we can slide these back around you know maybe turn that into a quad just slide some things around just to you know i always like to have just uh flowing geometry that kind of shows a little bit of a human touch to it um I, I spent a lot of time looking at machine generated geometry and i'm like how can i make mine not look like generated by a machine you know machines are so dumb um it's so it's so rare for them to generate geometry that doesn't show like the worst traits of a human right like uh auto retapo in a way shows like human sin right of um just showing a point but i'm pretty sure that we've actually completed the solve of this thing so we're just uh killing time at this point i should um begin actually rolling this towards a resolution so we're just going to jump out of camera mode and reorient our view uh things are crazy i'm just going to shift h and get rid of that and let's test it here's what we get with sub d this thing ignore that it's just an n gon you know i always talk about how you can just quickly turn n gons into quads we can just delete a face and just select this and press Control f and just um, grid fill and that's all quads now but in the end I don't even want that that's not what I want what I want is to hard market and let's um, get out and take a look at our wireframe here in fact for the end the same thing we just want to mark it so it just holds and this is the only area that really didn't work out for us so let's turn off sub D and edit mode so we can see the truth and you can see that things got very undefined in this area that I was this was one of the areas I was working so in a way I failed the challenge that means I'm gonna have to try it again maybe try it for the rest of the day but we weren't able to um, get this connection made which didn't make the um, sub D connection work out but sometimes sub D will actually work out with the most minimal of geometry uh, once you have an understanding of how sub D works and what it, what it takes and what it doesn't take you can actually kind of use that to your advantage to get particular results so I'm always talking about it with people who specifically ask such questions but I did also want to do a video kind of covering these sort of things as well so now we actually have this shading with a slightly better result but we can see that every one of these little um, doubles that we have like this one which didn't need to exist um, we need to merge that one at last. This one doesn't need to exist. We merge that one at last, but we can take this one and set up a triangle dependency there just to give it more, more definition, but just to show in action, you know, what, what our solving got us is, is there a double here? All right, there is. Let's remark that and we're good to go again. We'll bring that back a little bit and uh, I'll just grow this and our timeline is still playing. So I'll just shift select the boundary and we'll just control B roll that and just press P and press A to go back to adjustment. And we can only go as far as we, we were willing to solve for giving this thing allowance, but this is basically our result. So we can see some areas uh, just got a little bit, a little bit clipped, a little bit out of bounds, which means that they possibly don't have to exist anymore. And we could just hand those off to their new um, new flowing overlords that just kind of swept in and took over the joint. But that's how these things go with, with geometry. You know, sometimes you'll write a whole path for something. And then the entire um, next part of that branch will be taken care of by something ir completely irrelated. So we're just cleaning up a little bit more of our support geometry that we created. And now we're looking at our final shape. So, and this really isn't our final shape. I mean, the next thing from here is to press E, extrude it inwards, press E again, extrude, extrude. 
a little bit of extrude action we can select this and control click mark in order to bevel just that one single area i'm wondering why there's a uh, second face showing on the inside and i'm gu guessing that it's related to subdivision solving with ngon somewhere there we go modifier order always matters so there's still a few questionable areas that I'd still like to uh, kind of quiet down, like this area. Maybe just something like that would uh, actually get us a slightly quieter result. Like I said, with when it comes to topology, uh, there is no winning or losing. There, You just do a little bit better every time and hopefully learn a little bit more from it to help you in your adventures. But it's definitely one of those things that I recommend everybody get into Blender and spend a little bit of time studying. In fact, we look at this area and we see that, you know, geometrically, some elements just aren't allowed to live. So we should just decide, do we want this flow to happen? Do we want this edge to be in between that isn't even continuous because we don't even um, have a quad here? You know, if we change that to a quad, now we have a loop. Do we want that loop? And, you know, why not? It's a good loop. We'll keep it. So we'll dissolve that one as well, except we actually want to just merge it at last. And we could do the same thing here. I mean, every single one of these little inconsistencies that you saw is a step further in helping you uh, get, a, get a nice mesh result. So you're only doing these sort of things for your own benefit whenever you're getting in here, playing with the Boolean workflow. But now we see that the point in which we're looking at the mesh now compared to previously is definitely a lot better. In fact, we still have our previous version that we can just Alt H to unhide. And let's just move that one up and take a look at that versus what we have now after going through uh, just a little bit of touch and go for about 10 minutes on this particular shape. Uh, keep in mind that this is a cylinder being cut into a beveled round shape. So there's almost three levels of curvature taken into account. There's the curvature of the cylinder, the curvature of this bevel and the curvature of the actual solenoid kind of shape that we have here. In fact, to uh, really wrap this thing up nicely, I can press Alt X and we will use symmetry to symmetrize this on the Z and where I can just grab these elements and just press Control numpad plus to grow and just drag them inwards to create an any. And now we have, you know, this shape that I've been showcasing. In fact, in between, we can see that the geometry wasn't set up to be used in such a fashion, but no problem. So due to its simplicity in this case, we can just get in, make a few topological corrections, and wrap this thing up in no time. So now my new timeline in my head is set to half an hour at the uh, emergency wrap time. And of course, the purpose of this video is to get you more uh, connected with topology itself. Um, if I wanted to just be super in and out, super duper fast, I wouldn't be rotating the camera and solving geometry at the whim of a camera, you guys. But, you know, this is more than a tutorial. This is a uh, blendertainment. And I can only hope that there's people out there, you know, enjoying these segments, but I definitely feel that topology is one of those things that we should be having to talk about as far as um, at least providing some content to help people learn how to best solve such issues. In fact, with this, uh, we see that the geometry is just showing a little bit of knottage and these sort of things are always just difficult to figure out how to configure topologically. So I'm sure there's actually a completely optimal solution that's out there for getting these things to look just right. But really, in some cases, due to the geometry and the geometry you're attempting to converge, the best thing you can do is actually just make a choice between where you actually want these knots to be and where you want them to not be by just ensuring that the areas that matter most prominently to your view don't have shapes that will cause topological issues. So we can actually see in this case that me going in and actually attempting to fix it actually made things worse. So sometimes over obsession is just not the answer. In fact, the correct answer for this, like let's say I really did want to just 
correctly project it. I'm just going to press P and separate a profile of this. And we'll take this time to add a modifier and screw. And this is the shape that we get. And of course we want to remove bevel. We want to remove subdivision and we can actually up res this to whatever level we want. But before that, let's select the main shape. Let's select the shape that we have and under mesh tools, we will shrink to, and let's go in here and just, I was going to just sharpen things, but if we sharpen things, it'll probably uh, get caught by the um, limit method of weight that we're using. So I'm just actually going to just hide elements for this. I mean, we can also go in local mode and just turn off the shrink wrap modifier visibility for edit mode at this time. And I'm just continuing to hide things, just the simplest way to get through this in this case. And we'll just select everything and press Control G, um, assign to new group. And now we can go to the modifier and just project uh, from group that we just created. So if we come out of local mode, we still have this object sitting here solid. So we will just uh, turn that to shade wire. But in order for you to see the result, let's split the view and let's just talk about, you know, because I see a lot of people shrink wrapping in the Facebook group. And I'm like, I don't know where you guys are shrink wrapping from. Like, I never really talked about the shrink wrap features, but um, I guess it's a collab thing or something. So we'll jump this up to 64. You know, maybe even, um, let's see, where is it? Shade smooth. Jeez, this thing looks way more facet than normal. Let's take this and actually move our shrink wrap up above the sub D and that will actually probably be the answer. So now we can lower our spans to something like 32 and we can see it the shape, you know, just barely changed. Um, here we go. So at 12, you know, definitely something 24, you know, starts looking pretty good. We're actually going to set this to 128 just because we want just a perfectly round shape that we're going to be projecting this area to. In fact, we could probably actually um, move subdiv above it, but we still get this strange faceting, which I assume is probably due to our modifier order that's being employed here. But now we actually have, have accomplished the result that I'm going for. In fact, this area will forever haunt me. In fact, I almost want to redo the entire video just to solve this area a little bit better in my topological decisions leading up to it. I'm pretty sure it had something to do with the amount of bevel spans that I had in this compared to double, uh, double thinking my choice of using a 32 round cylinder and changing it to whatever level I used. But it's, you know, it's probably such a small thing in the scheme of things. Let's uh, slap a blank material on it. And we take a look at this thing again. And, you know, let's uh, give it a faster camera angle. I'm just looking at the transitions for these areas. In fact, you think um, there's, there's an area up there that's bad. I'm actually looking at an area down here. And the thing is, is, you know, when it comes to this stuff, you shouldn't run away from topology. If anything, you should uh, be trying to study and understand this sort of stuff because it'll make you a better modeler and have a better understanding of subdivision. So let's look at this again. I almost wonder about this thing where I can just remove it from the active group and if that helps or if I can assign the active group if that helps. I mean, just a little knot and it's a knot on a transition. So that's actually something that I would probably not permit. You can see that pretty much everything else around this area has a uh, specific connection. Meanwhile, this area does not. So let's go ahead and just fix that because it's just a glaring issue right in front of my eyes. So we'll just redraw the connection, remove that one, remove that one, creating that connection. But before that, we want to uh, just have a convergence there. 
and now I feel that we are looking at something a little bit better for um, what we're going for. And I can see a few imperfections just kind of lurking in the surface, just letting me know that there's always a next time and that there's always more perfection to be had. But I'm determined to push modeling as far as it can go for solving these sort of things before I begin um, absolutely transferring my normals since it does um, create a different type of workflow that I'm just not completely confident in its ability to um, be used everywhere. Especially when there's still so many programs that just absolutely crush normal information. I mean, one of my biggest complaints about ZBrush is how if you import anything with material indexes, it just destroys them. It just doesn't care. Put some material indexes, got an MTL, doesn't matter. Peace. Better forget about that. And I'm sure there's a way I could in import as groups and polygroup it and do a bunch of ZBrush stuff, but I don't know. It's just one of those things, but it's it's nothing major. So, and who am I? I'm, I am but, but one person. So we'll select both of these and I'll choose flatten and shift C to snap, snap this to the cursor. Let's try that again. Okay, let's snap our cursor to selected and then we will use flatten and I'll press shift C and it will put us directly at the cursor which kind of shows us exactly how far we uh, went with the topology um, overboard with solving this thing. I mean, I just wanted to put this thing at the zero point, but it appears that we are, we are too deep for that. So this shape will be a little bit bigger than usual. We'll actually set the origin to this location. Actually, we can't do that. And also, um, we want to remove that from the active group if we, we plan to move it at all because it's, it's being shrink wrapped, sorry. So we will just snap our cursor here and we'll take this shape and make it a collection. We'll just call it um, M, M part one or something. And now we can shift a insert a collection instance of M part one and we'll just place it here That way we can be double haunted by our mistakes as we look at this model. And we'll just actually select this circle that's on the inside. And maybe this circle as well. It's a party, everyone's invited. And we'll use curve extract. Just make a curve and just material scroll, press TT to jump to a mission. And we'll just find a nice emission. I mean, I've just skipped over a pink. I probably would have wanted that and we'll just put a little bloom on it. And because they are curve extractions, they're already added to the new collection. So I'm just, you know, getting to the wrap up point of this, just wanted to uh, end this on a nice result, you know, in case you want to haunt me with uh, the next level. But I mean, these are a, a, a solenoid of sorts. Also with this sort of stuff, I need to um, remove from active group in order to um, help it keep its existence. Otherwise it will be just slaughtered by the uh, shrink wrap. And I keep forgetting about that. So maybe something like that. And then let's say I want to make this a new piece. I can shift click curve extract to make this its own piece. And we'll just put a big bevel in it, which I guess won't work for this really complex shape. The good thing about two plate is it does keep all these modifiers, but the bad thing about it is it keeps all these modifiers. Um, sometimes it's important. Sometimes, you know, like in this case, it's not needed. So two plate is, is there for you whenever you need it. However, whenever it comes to um, adding blank materials, material scroll is there for you as well. I love scrolling through blank material and finding a, a random combination that just works. So the next thing we can also do for this is just select this piece, curve extract, scale it, maybe just set it to a mission glow as well. And just keep in mind that everything I make gets added to this collection instance, just making our lives a little easier. 
The other thing is I could put a loop cut right here because of hashtag topology and just flatten that, just use it the old way instead of hotkeys. And let's see what's close to us. Nothing. So that means we can um, put a loop cut in here, press E, Alt S, maybe I, E, Alt S, maybe Control Plus a couple of times. And you know, that's like the classic manual way that I used to make panels in hard ops. And we can just press Control G, remove from active group, maybe even hit it with a level of sharpening to just give it a, a hard sharpening. And we're already on our way to um, getting our, our final result. In fact, we let this play out and it's already looking pretty good. We're just having some fun here at the end. And of course, we could still be just playing around with topology and aiming for that ever higher level of perfection. But I'm here to tell you that if you're able to get it to the point where you can just get it to, you know, just look good and pass, then you definitely want to uh, step back and ponder if you really want to get in here and continue perfecting things. Because even as I look at this, I'm going to continue to um, want to perfect things. In fact, I see that if I don't have the active material index selected, that the F tool gets a little weird. But everywhere you see a topological issue in the shading, it's something that probably could be solved by you getting in there and just being just a little bit more efficient. In fact, I see that the shading breaks down because it's not marked completely around. So if I wanted a very hard crease going around and also because of the topology chosen for this, I didn't get a completely continuous loop. But because of the um, advanced curvature of the situation, I did want to come up with a um, more interesting solution to show you guys on this today. So let's Alt-H. Uh, actually, we can come out of local and just hide that thing. We don't need it. We can um, remove the rotation, set the scale, and maybe place our camera exactly where we want it, which is about here. And just move that out. And here we are just looking at our thing at the end. Of course, we can just hide that, hide that stuff. And all the stuff that's being hidden, I could always just unhide and just move it to the cutters collection, which means that, you know, it's, I'm just done with it. The cutters is kind of my garbage collection where I just place things I no longer need at this time. But now we're able to just let this thing just play us out. Actually, Let's look at it with some car paint. Always got to look at it with some car paint, don't we? Just to see what we're dealing with as far as these reflections go. So perfection is always something that I'll be struggling to get a little bit closer to. And I'll always feel like I get a little bit better in my tests than I do in my final results. But I spent a lot of time just letting different matte caps just pour across these models. And just seeing what they tell me. In fact, my favorite is the zebra stripes because they really just let you know what's going on with the mesh. But just know that over obsession sometimes it's just as bad as getting in there and just damaging every connection that you have with the geometry. So, with that, we can wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.